Hey traders, welcome back to another PineScript tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to focus on the security function in order to use higher time frame data. So the example I'm going to use today is implementing a higher time frame EMA. So what we're going to do is we're going to access the 50 day EMA on these intraday time frames. So on this four hour chart, when we're finished, it will be plotting the 50 day EMA as opposed to the 50 standard EMA. So let's get straight into this one. It's going to be called lesson eight today because that's what we're up to. First thing we need to do is set the overlay to true so that this will draw onto our charts. The next thing we need to do is get some user input. So the first input I'm going to get is the time frame. What time frame do we want to reference? So this is going to be called EMA time frame. It's going to be a type of input dot resolution. We're working with resolution here, which is, uh, which means time, time frame. And the default value is going to be D for daily chart. You could also set this to 1440, which is 1440 minutes. 1440 minutes is one day. Uh, otherwise just use D for short. The next input is going to be the EMA length. So EMA length and a type of integer integer and the default value is going to be 50 oh, typos everywhere today all right the next input is going to be whether or not to color this ema now this will make more sense later but what basically what this is going to do is that if price action is above the ema the ema will be colored green and if price action is below the ema it'll be colored red this is just something i like to do with my indicators the ones that use EMAs. So red obviously means I'm looking for short trades and green means I'm looking for long trades. And so I'll show you how to do that in this tutorial today as well. So this will be called color EMA and it'll be a type of input dot bool boolean. And the default value is going to be true. Last but not least is going to be our smoothing function. Now I'll, I'll explain this one later when we actually have the EMA plotting to the chart, uh, but this is going to also be a Boolean input. So input title equals smooth type, whoops, type is input dot bool. And this one is going to be set to uh, true as well. And I'll save that and uh, we'll move on to the next bit of code, which is going to be get, actually getting the EMA value itself. So I'll call this calculate EMA. And we'll begin here by establishing an EMA variable. So this EMA variable is going to be set to the inbuilt EMA function. If you hover your mouse over this, it'll tell you what you need to input in order to get a returned value. And this EMA function takes a source and a length. Source is high, low, close that sort of thing. Length is obviously the period length of the EMA. So we want to calculate this EMA based on the closing price, and it's going to be a length of len of our variable we created here. So a default of 50. The next thing we need to do is get the higher time frame EMA. So we're going to basically plug this line of code into the security function in order to use this to calculate uh, this EMA value based on the daily closing price or whatever time frame you set in your resolution input. So we're going to get two EMA values here, and this is going to be a little bit uh, complicated to explain, but I'll do my best. Basically, when you're calculating a higher time, something like a higher time frame EMA, you've got to remember that if I go down to a one hour chart, for example, there's 24 uh, one hour bars in a day. 24 one hour bars make up one daily bar. And so there's gaps between the start of this 24 hour period and the beginning of the next four hour pe uh, period. There's going to be gaps in price data on that higher time frame. And so what we're going to do in order to compensate that is we're going to have two EMA values. One is going to compensate for that value and the other is not. So basically one is going to be a smooth higher time frame EMA value, and one is going to be a stepped higher time frame EMA value. 
So this will make a lot more sense when this is drawing to the chart. So let's just write the code first and then I'll come back to explaining what's happening. So the first EMA value we're going to get is the smooth EMA value. And we're going to assign this one, this variable, to the security function. And now I'll explain what goes into this one. If you hover your mouse over the function name, it will tell you what inputs it takes. And it outputs whatever it needs to. Uh, floating point numbers, like price, price data, uh, integers, booleans, color, which I believe is candlestick color. Today, we're going to be working with the float because we're going to be calculating an EMA value, which is a float because it has decimal point numbers just like price action does because it is a an average of price action values. The first input this thing takes, this function takes, is what symbol do you want to calculate this data on? So you can actually use this to uh, reference other symbols. So you could reference, we're on Aussie CAD here, Australian dollar versus Canadian dollar. Uh, but you could reference Euro dollar or or a stock, uh, commodity, whatever you feel like. Uh, so I'm not going to go into detail about that in this tutorial because this is just introducing you to the security function. But in future tutorials, I'll show you how to reference other markets. Today's market, we're just going to reference the current symbol. So we need to write in here sim info, which is short for symbol info. Press control space and you get a list of uh, of variables you can you can grab from this basically this uh, this collection of uh, instrument data and so out of this list we want ticker id and this will give us the australian cad a-u-d-c-a-d and i believe it'll also get it from the same brokerage so so whatever broker you're on it will get the price action data for the symbol you're on from the same broker which is important obviously because uh different brokers have different price data and so you want this to be consistent uh, with the symbol you're referencing on your charts so TradingView takes care of that all for you just by this little happy little line of code here to reference Bob Ross. Um, but the next variable we need to input here is the resolution. What time frame are we referencing? And we can just reference our time frame input from up here. So just type in res. So I've got to take lots of breaks between writing this out because my neighbors are redoing their lawn and there's someone out there shoveling a whole lot of gravel. I don't envy them today. That's a it's a harder job than, than writing code. That's for damn sure. So the next uh, input variable we need to get, uh, we need to plug in to this security function is it's called expression here. You can see expression is a third input. Uh, basically, this is any expression, any line of code. And so we're going to be plugging in this here into into this expression slot or whatever. And what this is saying is, on the current uh, symbol, ticker ID Aussie CAD, on the current time frame, or the, uh, on the reference time frame, the daily time frame, it's saying, TradingView, please get us the EMA variable from this information. So this will be the daily close on the daily chart. And we'll be calculating a 50 period EMA with that information. But we're not quite done yet. We also need to plug in the gaps variable and the look ahead variable. And I'll explain what those do next. So the first one is gaps. And uh, we're going to write in here bar merge dot and press control space. And that will show us the available uh, variables for bar merge. Basically, if you put uh, bar merge dot gaps on, what that will do is remember I said that there's 24. Uh, one hour bars in a day. Well, this will merge the gaps between uh, the start of the day and the start of the next day. And basically what that will give us is a an average of the average. Uh, we're going into EMA inception here and we're calculating a average of the EMA, uh, the exponential moving average and merging the gaps between price action. So Again, that'll make more sense when you can see it on the chart. So for this one, we're just going to write gaps on. So we're turning bar merge on. We're merging the gaps of uh, any price action gaps on the higher time frame. We're turning that feature on. 
The next input is an interesting one as well. This is the look ahead. So if I type bar merge dot control space, we have look ahead on or look ahead off. Basically, what look ahead is, is that in historical data, when you're referencing a higher time frame, PineScript obviously has access to the day's closing price, the current day's closing price. So right now, the day daily chart hasn't closed on this time frame. So if you were to turn this to look ahead on, it would be referencing the current day's closing price. And that's how you would run into what's called repainting issues. I'll get into that in another lesson because it's a little bit advanced for this stage of this, uh, this course. But basically in layman's terms, uh, what that means is that if you set this to look ahead on throughout historical price action, the script will be able to look into the future to see what the day's closing price was before the day would have closed in live action. So first of all, there's all sorts of reasons why you would want the script to be able to cheat and look ahead. Uh, but I'm not going to go into them today. I'm just going to say that for the most part, for most scripts that you create, it's probably safest to just turn look ahead off. So this script is going to merge any price action gaps between uh, any missing price action gaps, and it's going to not look ahead. And basically when you turn this off, what that means is that instead of on historical data, instead of referencing the day's closing price and cheating, seeing looking ahead to see what the day's closing price was, it will simply reference the previous day's closing price instead, uh, which in this case, for the purposes we're using this um, higher time frame EMA for, is exactly what we want. So we'll leave that off. And the next step in this tutorial lesson is to create the EMA stepped version. And then I'll we'll plot these to the chart and it'll make a lot more sense what these two do. So again, we're going to reference the security function. We're going to do all the same here. We're going to reference the same uh, symbol that we're currently on, the same uh, higher time frame setting, the same EMA uh, expression. Uh, the only difference on this line of code is that we're going to set bar merge gaps off. And the bar merge uh, look ahead is also going to be off. So literally the only difference between these two lines of code is that this one has gaps off. And now we can uh, plot these two variables to our chart. So let's do that here. Now we don't want to draw both of these EMAs at the same time, which is why I have this smooth setting here. So whether this is turned on or off will determine which one of these EMAs we draw to the chart. So this is going to be a little bit of a messy line of code, but I'll explain it as we go. First thing we're going to use is what's called a conditional operator. If you're not sure what this is, just go back and, and go through my previous lessons where I explain in detail how this works. But this is like an if, if or else statement. So we're going to say if smoothing is on, if this smooth Boolean is set to true in the settings menu, then we want to draw the EMA smooth value. Otherwise, if this is set to false, we want to draw the EMA step value then comma for that. Uh, the next function setting for this, this plot function is going to be the color. What color are we going to draw this EMA as? And that's where this color uh, variable Boolean comes into play. We're going to say if we're coloring this EMA, then we want it to be green if the current closing price on this time frame is above our higher time frame. I'm going to use EMA step for this and uh, I'm not going to explain why, but that'll make more sense if you if you go over this lesson a couple of times and you and you really think about what these two lines of code do but anyway here we're going to stack two conditional operators on top of each other so we're going to say if the color variable is turned on this boolean is set to true and the if the closing price is above the higher time frame EMA then we want to set the color to green otherwise if color is set to true and the closing price is not above the EMA, higher time frame EMA, then we want to set the color to red. And then we'll draw another semicolon here. Otherwise, we're just going to paint it black, as the Rolling Stones would say. I'll just go over this one more time because I know it's a bit confusing to look at, but what it's saying is if the color variable is set to true, if the user has set this Boolean to true, this checkbox is ticked, and 
the closing price is currently above the higher time frame EMA, then we want to set the EMA color to green. Otherwise, if it's the closing price is below the EMA or equal to it, then we want to set it to red. And if this color variable, input variable, is not set to true, meaning the checkbox is not ticked, then we're just going to paint it a solid black color. And that's it for this section. Now we're just going to set the line width to two so that it's just a little bit thicker. I feel that that works better on EMAs, especially a higher time frame EMA. And we're going to title this plot function so that our users can go into the settings menu and change these colors if they want to. So I'm going to say EMA in brackets, higher time frame. And that's it for this script. Basically, we can hit save and add to chart. Hopefully there's no errors. Doesn't look like it. Add to chart. And there we have it. It's now plotting to the chart, but because we're so zoomed in on this one hour time frame, we can't see it. So zoom out a little bit. Let's go up to the four hour chart. And here we have the higher time frame EMA, 50 day EMA being drawn to our four hour chart. Uh, but we do have smoothing turned on. So if we come up to here and we turn smooth off, now we have our stepped 50 day EMA. And so I'll just quickly explain the stepped EMA again, now that we can see it on our chart, and that'll be the end of this lesson. So we go down to one hour chart, zoom out a bit. If I count the amount of bars between each step, you'll see that it adds up to 24. So during this whole day of price action, the EMA was one solid value. And this was the previous day's 50 EMA value based on the closing price. And this is exactly what we want. If you're going to use this information to trade off, uh, this is what you want on your chart. And now this script isn't quite perfect. If I, um, if you look up here, you can see that it's, it is actually repainting. It's still repainting, even though we set look ahead to off. I'm not going to go over how to fix that in this, in this lesson, because it's, it's quite a detailed process and the lesson's already long enough. Uh, but this is the gist of what you would need to do in order to achieve working with higher time frame data using the security function. In future lessons, we'll do other things like drawing the higher time frame high or low or that sort of thing. Uh, but this is a great int introduction to the security function, what all the variables do. And so, yeah, this, if we turn this to smooth, if, uh, if we turn the smooth function on, you can see that it's merging the gaps. And so we're not getting that stepped effect. Uh, but, but this is an inaccurate 50 day EMA reading looks a lot better, looks cleaner on your chart, and it could be useful for things like just performing general technical analysis uh, on your charts. But if you wanted to use these levels to trade off, it would be much better to have this stepped version on so that during this day, uh, you are referencing the previous, uh, previous day's 50 EMA value instead of the current day's 50 EMA value, which really we sh won't know until the end of the trading session and the and the current daily chart closes. So yeah, that's it for this lesson. I hope that made sense. If not, leave a question in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you found this lesson helpful, please subscribe to the channel. That is a lot of motivation to continue making these videos. And I'm glad to be able to help you guys learn this new skill. And just before I leave, I just wanted to let you guys know that there is a lot that goes into creating complex and practical, useful pine script, uh, scripts and indicators. And so I'm considering creating a very in-depth advanced pine script course for you guys going into detail, maybe going over how I create my own indicators, my own complex indicators, such as my ultimate uh, pullback indicator, which I actually use to trade the live markets, Forex markets. And this is painting uh, pullback signals to the chart. So you can see it's, it sends me an alert telling me when to go long or short. It tells me my stop loss, my target placement. And uh, you can see it's had a couple of winning trades here. Uh, I'm considering teaching you guys exactly how I made this sort of indicator. The catch is uh, this information is quite valuable. It took me a long time, many, many, many hours of work to get something like this working. And I don't really feel comfortable giving away all of my secrets for free. So I'm considering creating a premium PineScript course where I'll go into much more detail about how to practically apply all of this information. And I'll make it affordable when it is finished. And by the end of it, you will be able to create your own 
strategy scripts, your own indicators, and tools to aid in your own trading. And so over the next few maybe months, I'm going to be working on that and building that and making that as, as great as I possibly can. And I'll let you guys know when it's ready. And for those of you who really want to take this to the next level, uh, that'll be a great resource for you guys to really enhance your edge. And in that course, I may even include a mentorship option where you can get one-on-one -on -one access with me and ask me questions, and I'll help you to create your own scripts. Because right now, I'm getting a lot of questions from traders and coders, and I just I really don't have the time to help everyone. And so I'd love to offer a service where I can help you guys. But obviously, with the amount of time I spend on my own trading and, and content creation, I just don't have the time to do that for everyone. So I'll have to find a way to prioritize that. And maybe the core students can get that priority. And so if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the video description to sign up to my PineScript mailing list. And anyone who signs up before the course is released, I'll send out an email to you when it is released. And I'll give you a significant discount on the opening price for supporting me and for pursuing uh, success and being proactive about your trading because I respect that and I will reward that where I can. So I'll speak to you guys in the next lesson. Good luck with your trading. Best of luck with your coding. Keep at it. I know this stuff can be confusing and it takes time to learn, but it's extremely, extremely valuable information to master. And once you do, uh, you will be able to take your trading to the next level completely and possibly even automate your strategies. That'll be another thing I'll cover. In the, in the paid course, how to use third party APIs to automate strategy scripts. So take it easy, everybody. I've enjoyed this uh, time with you. I hope you did too. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.